Please adhere to YouTube's selected guidelines before viewing content of this video. I do not encourage or condone any products, actions, or behaviors shown in this video. All videos are produced in a safe, professional, and controlled environment. Please do not attempt to replicate any actions performed during the video. All actions are performed by professionals. Alrighty, so today I'm going to be going over what I, as a cigarette smoker, packed for my one-month trip in Japan. I'm currently at week three of my one-month trip, and I have two weeks remaining. I realize that math doesn't line up, and that is because I figured the title would sound better if I said one-month trip to Japan instead of five-week trip to Japan. It just sounds more significant as a title in my head at least. Yeah, moving on from that, um, what's a good starting point for this video? Well, as a cigarette smoker, of course, the most essential thing for me to pack is, of course, well, a pack of cigarettes. Now, this is not the pack of cigarettes I, well, brought with me. I brought an American pack of cigarettes with me, but I have already finished off that pack and I've already thrown it away, so I don't have it on me anymore. So, this pack of Black Devil Mocha Vanilla flavored cigarettes from Japan will have to suffice as an example, that is for sure. But of course, as a cigarette smoker, the most essential thing that I needed to bring with me was, of course, cigarettes. The moment I got off the flight, I was looking for smoking areas. I was like, where are they? I know they're somewhere. And I didn't have a cigarette until I got to the hotel that night. And that was a little bit of a shame, I ain't gonna lie. But... It was a big brain move to bring cigarettes with me because I didn't have to buy any cigarettes or anything like that at any convenience stores. I didn't have to even stress about it because I already knew that I had cigarettes on me. And that was a very big brain move if I do say so myself. Now, of course, even if I bring cigarettes, I can't get them lit up without a lighter. So as such, as a cigarette smoker, I had to bring a lighter <laughs> as a cigarette smoker i had to bring a lighter with me you know what i'm saying i brought a big original just normal sized lighter you know what i'm saying but what if i lost the lighter on the flight what if i lost the lighter somewhere in the airport now that really would be a shame what if the tsa took my big lighter and that's happened before i went to mexico about six months ago now and they took my big lighter at the airport that's right. They took my Bic lighter. I was like, what is going on? Why did y'all take my Bic lighter? I'm allowed to have one on the flight. So just in case anything happened to my lighter, I, I, I did bring uh, two, two backup lighters with me. Because, I mean, like, who knows? The convenience store you go to might be out of lighters. So this lighter might work just fine. But if you lose this lighter, you got to make sure you have a backup lighter and, and, and you got to make sure you have another backup lighter. Yeah, no, no joke. I actually, I actually did bring two backup lighters. Um, I actually always have these in my backpack whenever I'm just out and about kind of thing. Um, because who knows, my lighter might just crap itself. And then all of a sudden I have no way to get my cigarettes all lit up. Uh, so, so I, so I had to bring two backup lighters. Yeah, um, <laughs> moving on from that, moving on from that. Uh, the most essential thing for this entire trip, though, definitely was, let me just flip through it real quick just to make sure y'all can't see any personal information or anything like that. The most essential thing for this trip, as a person in general kind of thing, not even just as a cigarette smoker, as a person in general, was, of course, my passport. And I say this completely seriously. I, 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 I've been very, a little bit, a tiny bit sarcastic, a tiny bit joking throughout this video kind of thing. No, I'm saying this completely seriously. I mean, like, this trip wouldn't work at all if I didn't have my passport on me. My passport really is probably the most important thing other than my cigarettes and my spare lighters. I'm just saying. I'd be just fine if I just had my cigarettes and my spare lighters kind of thing. But my passport is definitely number three. I ain't gonna lie. My passport is definitely number three. And I mean, like, I wouldn't be in Japan right now if it wasn't for it. I'm glad I brought my passport with me. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad I packed my passport. That is for sure. Because without it, I, I wouldn't be in Japan right now. Uh, what else do I want to go ahead and talk about? I guess I'll go ahead and start covering uh, stuff I had in my pockets when I was going through the airport. I had my AirPods. These were very helpful in the airport. Don't got to worry about cords. You can just throw them in, toss them out kind of thing. Uh, just get going kind of thing. Really helpful. Love my AirPods. I ain't going to lie. Uh, next up, we've got my mask. Japan is very big on masks still, so I had to bring my mask, you know what I'm saying? Excuse me, I might have had a beer before this. 
Uh, next up, we've got my wallet. Um, now, my wallet right now is full of cash. I didn't bring any cash with me because I brought a debit card with me that has no international transaction fees besides the actual international transaction rate. And funnily enough, no YouTube videos really mention this when they're talking about like 7-Eleven ATMs because, of course, 7-Eleven ATMs charge a fee as a lot of ATMs do kind of thing. Unless you're using the ATM that goes with your exact bank, you're going to get a fee on it kind of thing. You're going to get a fee on it. It sucks kind of thing. The fees are not fun kind of thing. And sometimes they can be ex so exorbitant, it's insane. Now, 7-Eleven ATM fees are not exorbitant by any means. They're like, I want to say 80 cents kind of thing. 110 yen, like 80 cents. It's not terrible. But it's not great either. It's not great either. And I've gotten cash out four times so far. Actually, five times because I got cash out today uh, in Japan. So that's like what? two and a half monsters that's or or one pack of cigarettes that's a lot of money actually yeah no that's like one pack of cigarettes in japan kind of thing that's like one pack of seven stars or or one and a half pack of really cheap cigarettes kind of thing that's actually yeah i'm glad i have a debit card that um doesn't have ATM fees because it gives me back the money for my ATM fees. Um, no YouTube videos. I, I'm going on a little bit of a rant right now. No YouTube videos for whatever reason have mentioned this. I was I was watching YouTube videos before I came to Japan and they were like, okay, yeah, either you're going to have to get money out and you're going to have to deal with the fees or you're going to have to find some other way to get money out kind of thing. Or you're going to have to bring money with you. Uh, and what none of the YouTube videos mentioned was that you can just get a debit card from a bank that gives you back the ATM fees. Now, I'm not going to say what specific bank I use, of course. Um, I've got a bigger brain than that. My small brain is big enough to know that I shouldn't say that. Um, but, but, still, none of them mention that. And and so I hope if you guys come to Japan that that little statement can be of help. Get an AT, get, 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 get a debit card that doesn't have any ATM fees. Now, now I will admit I had big brain move on that. I had small brain move on my credit card, though, because I've been using my credit card for everything other than anything that's cash-based. A lot of places in Japan, still very much cash-based society kind of thing. Grocery stores, a lot of them I've gone to are only cash. But most restaurants I've gone to are t take credit cards, and most places I've gone to still take credit cards and debit cards and everything like that. But just to be safe... I wanted to use a credit card just in case somebody decides to overcharge me or anything like that kind of thing. I want to make sure I can get my money back without it being taken directly out of my debit account. I don't want somebody just yanking all of the money out of my debit account kind of thing. That would suck. I ain't gonna lie and it would be a while until I get that money back. So I got a credit card from a bank. I'm not gonna say what bank, once again. Um, see, here's the thing. I, I had small brain move on this um, because... I got a I got a card with international transaction fees. Uh, now I also did apply for a card without international transaction fees, but I got declined for it because my credit is non-existent. <laughs> I haven't had credit until this point. I've never had a credit card before. Literally before this trip, I had never had a credit card before. I was like, I know I need a credit card for this trip because I'm not using my debit card in another country, kind of thing. Because when I've traveled before, I've just gotten cash out. And I didn't feel like doing that for everything this time. And since I had no credit, I got declined for all of the cards I wanted to get that have no international transaction. Um, so yeah, if you're going to Japan, make sure to get your credit up beforehand. I'm uh, moving on from that though. Uh, what have I already covered? I've already covered my AirPods, my mask, everything like that kind of thing. I've now covered my wallet as well. Um, if you don't feel like dealing with a, a credit card or a debit card or anything like that kind of thing, just get a, a ton of yen out beforehand, although there are fees incurred with that as well. Um, the, and another thing I brought, uh, let's just go ahead and cover this up, where are my keys? I'm not small enough brain to know that I should, I, I'm, I've got big enough brain and my small brain to know that I should not show my keys online, so, so I will not be doing that, but I did indeed bring my keys with me, which is a big brain move because uh, the Airbnb I'm staying at currently uh, has just a normal key kind of thing, and so I can still just put my put the Airbnb key on my normal keychain kind of thing. Really helpful. I brought my house key with me though, uh, just in case um, whenever I get 
back to the US. I, I, for some reason, can't get my house key or something like that. I just figured it was a big brain move to do. So I did it, you know what I'm saying? I did it. Plus, I just like having my keys on me at all times kind of thing. It just makes me feel more comfortable. Um, I do suppose probably the next thing I should cover though, now that I've pretty much covered everything that I carried on my person in the airport, uh, excuse me, as I said, I had a, a little bit of a, of, of a drink before this. I had a, oh, I had a Suntory Strong Zero 9% Lemon Sake Seltzer. And I ain't gonna lie, it got me really buzzed. It was really good. <laughs> it was actually, I've been drinking these, I've been drinking these a little bit. And they are fantastic. I really want them to be sold in the U.S. I've got to find a place which sells them in the U.S. Because they are amazing and they're gluten-free, which I love. Um, but I do suppose to cover the rest of the stuff I need to cover, I should probably cover what I actually packed all of my stuff in. Um, now I decided to one bag this trip. One bagging is so nice for me. I love one bagging. Um, I don't got to worry about anything to do with check baggage. I don't got to worry about check baggage fees. I don't got to worry about the airport losing my check baggage. Yeah, check baggage, not carry on, check baggage. Um, I don't got to worry about the airport losing my check baggage or anything like that kind of thing. And I, I don't like carrying around a second bag with me when I'm just wandering around waiting for my Airbnb to open up to check in for the day and everything like that kind of thing. I don't like doing that. So as such, I packed everything in one singular backpack, which wasn't really a challenge. I've done this before. I went to Mexico uh, a while back, as I said earlier in this video, and uh, I, did, I did one bagging for that trip as well. Uh, for that trip, though, I feel like I overpacked a little bit. For this trip, I still feel like I overpacked a little bit, but less so. Uh, the backpack, though, on a slightly different topic of one bagging, I do suppose. I should probably actually, if I'm talking about one bagging, I should probably go ahead and show you guys the, the one bag I'm using. The backpack I decided to pack everything in for this trip was my North Face Surge 2. It's a great backpack. I got it for $10.99. I want to say $10.99 at uh, Goodwill in the United States. And it was a fantastic deal. It really was a fantastic deal. I love this backpack. Uh, my only issue with it is, is that it's a top-loading backpack and not a clamshell backpack. I love clamshell backpacks, but the clamshell backpacks I want are like $200, and I'm not willing to drop that amount of money on a backpack. So until this one craps itself, I'm going to be using this one. It's got just, it's got an area where you put your laptop, big-ass pouch in the middle, electronics pouch, sunglass holder, and then two little things right here for ciggies. This is the, the, these two little pockets right here. That's where I store all my cigarettes. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to the backpack in general. Uh, the Surge 2, I want to say, is 32 or 34 liters. So it's definitely not the biggest, but it's also definitely not the smallest. And I think the literage for it and the organization for it is pretty much perfect. And really the only way it could be even more perfect than it already is is on honestly if it was a clamshell that would be the only way it could be any better um, moving on from that though i suppose a good segue is to go ahead and start covering what i packed for clothing um now clothing what i actually wore on me i wore let me just go ahead and move everything over uh on top of everything else i wore my columbia fleece right here i wore my columbia fleece now i stole this from my dad and then I told him I stole it from him and he was like, I don't care. I don't wear this anyway because it has a yogurt stain on the sleeve because um, he spilled yogurt on it. No, I don't mean that as a diss. Uh, I mean that as a good thing because without that yogurt stain, I, 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 I wouldn't have the fleece. So thank you very much for the fleece, Dad. I do appreciate it. But I stole this fleece from him and um, it's been fantastic. It's been fantastic. It's like 10 years old and I ain't gonna lie, y'all. It's really wind resistant. It's really warm. I wore this in like 20 degree Fahrenheit weather and it's fantastic. It kept me so warm the entire time. This is what I wore through the airport. Under my fleece though, I wore this Carhartt hoodie right here. Uh, this is the only hoodie I brought with me to Japan because hoodies take up a lot of space. So I only brought one hoodie with me. And then I wore this pair of, well, maybe not this exact pair. I, br I brought two pairs of Wrangler Rustler jeans with me, $14 from, uh, from, from, not Amazon, from Walmart. I brought two pairs of Wrangler Rustler jeans with me and I wore one of the pairs through the airport. I also wore a pair of thermals underneath and then the shirt that I wore, ah, oh man, I thought the bed was gonna be softer. Oh no. Okay, well, it really wasn't that bad, but it actually did hurt for a minute. <laughs> 
<laughs> it actually did hurt for a minute. Um, but the shirt I wore through the airport under my hoodie uh, was this Carhartt long sleeve pocket tee. Um, now, I did only bring one shirt with me because when I got to Japan, I already knew that I wanted to buy a thermal top from Uniqlo. I bought a Thernicot, th th Thernicot. I bought a thermal top from Uniqlo. I bought the, I bought the, I need some water. And I need to smoke. But there's no smoking in this Airbnb, so I ain't smoking right now. But, but, when I left for Japan, I knew that I was going to buy a heat tech top, heat tech thermal top from Uniqlo. So I only packed one shirt with me, and that was a great move because I bought the top from Uniqlo and is exactly what I wanted. It's super warm, and I'm actually wearing it right now. It's it's fantastic. It keeps me so warm, I ain't going to lie, y'all. I also packed a pair of thermals, as I said, and I wore those under my Wrangler Rustler jeans from Walmart, 14 bucks at Walmart. And uh, I ditched those because I bought a pair of Uniqlo heat tech thermals as well, which are far better than the thermals I got from Walmart. I also packed uh, three pairs of socks. So I packed uh, two pairs of Dickies wool blend socks. These are super warm. have been keeping me really warm during the winter in Japan right now. I realize it's probably not winter when you guys are watching this video, but it is winter right now and it's very cold right now. The high today was like 45 degrees, which is pretty chilly for me. I ain't gonna lie. But I did pack two pairs of Dickies thermal socks and I packed just one pair of normal Dickies uh, really long socks because I prefer really long socks personally uh, just for the warmer days and everything like that not like there have been many there's been like two really warm days and they still weren't really all that warm and yeah um, moving on from that though that was most of my clothing um, of course underwear I packed two pairs of underwear I wore one of them through the airport and I took another one in my backpack boxer brief gang um i also packed and i did not wear this stuff through the airport but i did have it in my backpack i packed a pair of fingerless gloves i got these for like 10 bucks at rei they're fantastic i had a pair when i was a kid and they lasted for like 10 years and i love these gloves i wear these so much and i actually wear these pretty much every single day they're so comfy so warm i love them and the only thing they don't keep warm is my fingertips but that's kind of the point of them i also brought a pair of gloves my mom bought me. I don't know what brand these are. I don't know how much they cost. I have no clue. I got them as a Christmas present. I didn't ask. They're really warm and they're fantastic gloves though. So I appreciate the present mom. Thank you very much. Um, but I also brought a Patagucci gainer, ga gainer, gator, a Patagucci gator. Keeps me very warm. I've been wearing this pretty much every single day. And of course, my Carhartt beanie. My Carhartt beanie. I mean, like, it's a Carhartt beanie. What can I say? Super warm, super comfy, really durable. Love it. I ain't gonna lie. Y'all. I've had this beanie for, like, I want to say, like, the last four or five years, and it's been great through and through. I ain't gonna lie. And uh, it's been great to pack on trips, too. It's been great to pack on trips. Uh, that's pretty much all the clothing I brought, though. Yeah, no, just two pairs of pants, uh, one shirt, one jacket, one hoodie, um, one pair of thermals, three socks, two pairs of underwear, and a pair of shoes. I almost forgot to show you guys the shoes I packed. The one and only pair of shoes I packed are my black Air Force Ones. Of course, I always got to stay strapped with the stompers, you know what I'm saying? So I got my black Air Force Ones on me. I'm going to try to move through everything else a little bit faster than I have been, though, um, because I've been moving a little bit slowly. And uh, the rest of the stuff is all kind of boring kind of thing. I feel like my clothing is kind of interesting kind of thing. It's very, I, I find it very interesting to see what amount of clothing other people pack and everything like that kind of thing to really see, okay, how minimal do I want to go with my clothing kind of thing. Uh, the rest of the stuff though is, is very much stuff that I either need for A, recording videos or B, uh, stuff that I just bring just for safety and security or personal stuff and everything like that kind of thing. I think I'm going to go ahead and start off with just uh, video recording equipment. I brought, of course, the tripod that I'm using to record this video right now. Uh, let me go ahead and get my a bit of a mirror and I should actually put this in here because that's part of what I brought with me 
Um, so I've got a mirror right here and we can see the tripod that I'm using. This was 20 bucks on Amazon and it's been fantastic about it for like three or four years and I love it. I took this in my backpack along with the phone holder that I'm using uh, to hold my phone. And an another thing I brought on me is my iPhone 11, of course. Uh, that's a pretty essential thing, I will admit, that I completely forgot to mention. I don't know how I forgot to mention my iPhone 3. Um, but you know, the tripod is pretty great. I ain't gonna lie on and I do love it overall. And uh, another tripod I brought though, I'm gonna go and put this right there. Uh, another tripod I brought though is this tripod right here. Um, I bought this right before the trip because I was like, you know what? I want to vlog on this trip. And I was right. I've been vlogging a decent amount kind of thing. And this tripod is so damn good for vlogging. It is insane. And I'm so glad I brought that. I, I bought this tripod. But before I bought this tripod, I, I bought a different tripod and I regretted it. I bought a Gorilla Grip tripod. This Not the same one Casey Neistat used, but a similar one, a smaller one than that one. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy this. No joke, because Casey Neistat used it. I was like, you know what? Casey Neistat, he, he's a vlogger kind of thing. He must he must know what's up with his tripods. Turns out I hate the Gorilla Grip tripods. Um, so I bought this one instead. But what I really, really, really liked about the Gorilla Grip tripod was their fold flat phone holder. Folds, folds, boom, like this kind of thing. And I love it. Now, this is my backup phone holder, just in case the one I'm using right now craps out or something like that kind of thing. This is a fantastic fold holder though, holder though, but I prefer the one I'm using right now. But just in case something happens to my phone holder or whatever, I now have a backup that I can just strap to my tripod and, and just, oh man, did I do this? Oh, I did, oh, I almost broke it. I did it the wrong way, I almost broke it. That's another reason why I have a spare. Oh no, did I just, what the? I thought I just cross-threaded it by hex. <laughs> that would have really sucked. That would have sucked so bad. Okay, I have now attached it. And then you just put it up like that kind of thing. And it, it's, a, it's a pretty good phone holder kind of thing. It's a pretty good phone holder. I don't really like phone holders that are like springs or anything like that kind of thing. Um, but you know, that's pretty much all of the recording equipment I brought with me. Just brought uh, one tripod, my phone, and uh, another tripod and a spare phone holder just in case you never know kind of thing you really do never know you got to be a little bit careful and i ain't missing out on no videos uh, just because i didn't bring a spare tripod or a spare phone holder and uh this tripod has been fantastic for vlogging it's like a Yulon, Yulonzi or something like that like 20 bucks on amazon it was fantastic um of course though if I'm gonna have a backup of tripods, if I'm gonna have a backup of a phone holder, I need to have, where is it? I put it somewhere. Where is it? I need to have a backup phone. <laughs> I found it. Um, this is my old phone that I used to use to record every single video. Like I wanna say a solid third of the videos on my channel were recorded with this phone right here. This is a Motorola G Stylus. And I bought an iPhone because it's got better video quality. That's why I like it kind of thing. Um, if I was using this, to record my video right now, it would be dim and y'all would bear, be, barely be able to see me kind of thing. Not very good video quality with weird lighting. iPhone fixes all the issues. That's besides the point though. Um, this phone though, I t I've brought with me as a backup. I've mostly just been using it as my TV to watch anime or whatever while I'm eating, uh, anime, YouTube, whatever while I'm eating. Um, but it's been fantastic nonetheless. And I ain't gonna lie, having a backup phone just gives me that little bit of comfort in the back of my um, head kind of thing. If something happens to my phone, if I lose it, break it, it gets stolen or anything like that kind of thing, I don't have to worry about going over to the Apple store and dropping another $700 on a phone uh, because I have a backup phone with me that I can use to record, shove my SIM into and everything like that kind of thing. And all of a sudden I don't have to worry about anything anymore and everything like that kind of thing. So certainly no complaints on my behalf. And that's a great segue into electronics because this is an electronic device after all. Um, so of course the most essential thing besides my backup phone for electronics was my laptop. I edit all of my videos. In fact, I've actually edited all of my cigarette videos on this channel on this laptop right here. And of course this is an essential device for me uh, as somebody who likes to make videos on YouTube. Um, so yeah, this is, I, I brought my laptop with me and of course my laptop uh, can't do anything without its laptop charger. 
I wish my laptop was USB-C because then I wouldn't have to bring my laptop charger with me. The next laptop I get is gonna be USB-C Thunderbird because then I can slim down my chargers even less. I did indeed bring though, for my phones, two charging bricks. One stays in my backpack, one stays at the Airbnb, and I brought three charging cords with me since my spare phone is USB-C. I have a USB-C cord with me. And since my iPhone is lightning, I brought two lightning cords with me, one to just stay plugged into the Airbnb and one to bring in my backpack. And I leave this one at the Airbnb pretty much 24 seven. Now, another thing I use that is indeed USB-C is my mobile battery packs right here, which have come in very handy because Google Maps and recording, which I've been using both of quite a bit, in Japan, burn through battery really, really, really easily, especially when you're using it on max brightness, which I tend to use on my phone on max brightness all the time during the day, which is definitely not like the greatest thing in the world for my phone's health, but that's okay because I don't care. Um, these have been fantastic though. These are also hand warmers, which is fantastic as well. They keep your hands warm. And just a ba ba. Oh, there we go. It's on hand warmer and it's off. These are fantastic kind of things. These are fantastic. Another gift for my parents. A great gift, I ain't gonna lie. And they've been keeping me alive when it's really cold out kind of thing. And they've been charging my phone at the same time. They really are fantastic and I love them. I ain't gonna lie y'all. Now, something that I almost forgot to mention, and actually I've got, I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and put these all on the bed because I almost forgot to mention all of them. I brought a three prong, two prong converter. My phone, my computer would be useless without it because, uh, chargers out wall outlets in japan are all two prong not three prong i heard that there was some three prong the fucking lie they're all two prong i haven't seen a single three prong um so i'm really glad i brought three prong to two prong converters i also brought uh, my mouse i've got a, a logitech g305 mouse it's been great it's not the most packable mouse in the world but i used to use a packable mouse and it fucking sucks for ergonomics this is so much damn better and i love it and then i've also got and i'll, I'll cover that last i've also got a little pouch right here i love this pouch where i hold four usb drives a 3.5 to lightning converter my uh, headphones for my computer and a little bit of a uh, like USB uh, A outlet docker and everything like that kind of thing for my computer so I can have everything organized without having to switch everything around 24 7 and uh, this little pouch is very good for organization and everything like that kind of thing and I really do like it uh, moving on from that though into my last electronic thing I want to say even though I do have more electronics they're not specifically electronics I have my Altoids smalls here um no i actually didn't bring altoids with me this is my sim card holder i looked at amazon before this video and uh before this video before this trip and i was looking for sim card holders and i was like wow all of them suck there are no good sim card holders on the market they all are terrible they all hold like 50 sims i don't need something that holds 50 sims i just need something that holds like I don't know, like five sims kind of thing. I, that's all I need. I just need my sim for home, and I just need a sim for Japan kind of thing. Maybe, maybe two or three. I'm on like my third sim right now because I've been burning through data using Google Maps. Um, but, but they all suck kind of thing. They all suck and they're all overpriced. And so I said, you know what? F this shit. I am using an Altoids container with a plastic bag on the inside. Now, I'm not gonna show y'all what the inside of this looks like. I'm not gonna show y'all what carrier I use because I've got bigger brain than that. Y'all could probably hack my phone number or something like that kind of thing. If y'all know what carrier I use, I'm not revealing what carrier I use. But, but, Altoids container with a plastic bag on the inside. Great SIM card holder, I ain't gonna lie y'all. I also have my uh, SIM card remover in it. It's fantastic. Moving on to my toiletries. I, of course, first off have Old Spice Original, best deodorant ever. And then I also have uh, toothpaste pills. That's right, I forgot them in the bathroom though, so y'all aren't gonna be seeing them. I also have razor number one and razor number two. Now this is really where I feel like I started to overpack and these are all kind of disorganized because I've been at the Airbnb for over a day now. Um, this is where I really started to feel like I overpacked because this is like a huge amount of space in my backpack, even when compared to my clothing. This is a huge amount of space in my backpack. Um, I need to find just one razor that does it all kind of thing, but I haven't been able to find that. I really like getting like a really smooth shave, like on the sides of my face kind of thing. 
and uh, that's what this razor is really good for. But I also like being able to trim my little bit of a goatee and everything like that. And that's what this razor is really good at. And I haven't found a razor that does both really well, and that is an issue. Um, because I feel like I overpacked for my toiletries. Uh, what else? Oh no, I've actually got my toothpaste pills right here. Um, yeah, I use Dentec toothpaste pills for this trip, so I don't have to worry about breaking the TSA's uh, liquid limit or anything like that kind of thing. These have been fantastic. And I also packed some uh, dental flossers with me. And of course, a toothbrush. I packed a toothbrush with me as well. Is there anything else? I think that was it for toiletries. Oh, moisturizer. I brought moisturizer with me, scent-free moisturizer, which is in the bathroom right now. I don't have that out. Um, that's all there is to toiletries, though. Moving on to just all of my miscellaneous gear. And we have, starting off, Tylenol. Now, I don't bring Tylenol to every country I've ever visited. I think uh, when I went to Mexico, I didn't, I didn't bring Tylenol with me because I didn't know if it was good to bring through the airport. Japan, though, doesn't care. I looked it up beforehand. You can bring Tylenol through the airport. Uh, don't quote me on that, though. Do your own research before I say I could have just gotten through the airport illegally with this. Um, but, you know, I brought Tylenol with me just in case I get a headache or anything like that. It's just good to have on you. I brought a just cheap random bottle opener with me as well kind of thing. Um, when I went to Mexico, I wanted to open a bottle and I couldn't because I didn't bring a bottle opener with me because the bottle opener I normally have in my backpack is a bullet bottle ho op <laughs> it's a bu it's a bullet bottle opener. I was like, this is a really bad idea to take through the airport. So I didn't. Uh, but I didn't have another bottle opener at that point. But since then, I have acquired a very cheap, stupid, not very good bottle. Actually, this is a pretty good bottle opener. It's not bad. I don't think I've ever used it, but it's not a bad bottle opener kind of thing. It's just a cheap bottle opener that I don't care if I lose or not. Um, I brought this with me as well to open bottles, of course. And then I brought two pens. You never know when you're going to need a pen. I have not used this pen a single time. I've used this like twice. And it's been great. I'm not bringing a Sharpie next time. I overpacked this, but this pen has been great on the other hand. Uh, moving on from that though, I brought a coin, 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 coin purse with me. I brought a coin purse with me. And this has been really, 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 really helpful. Japan is a very much cash-based society. You need to have cash and a lot of cash is coins. Um, so a coin purse is definitely a good idea. And I think that's actually everything except for one thing. Holy shit, have I actually covered everything in just 30 minutes? <laughs> I ain't gonna lie y'all, I actually recorded this video last night, and it was 55 minutes long. I'm not joking about that. It was 55 minutes long, and I said, I was watching it, I was like, no, I cannot post this. <laughs> it's, it's 55 minutes of me talking about what I brought. If I feel like it, I'll post it as an unlisted video, and I'll link it in the, in, in the description down below so y'all can watch the full 55 minute version of this. But the final thing I wanna talk about in this video because this is everything I have to cover. I didn't bring a single other thing in my backpack. Now, I've acquired a bunch of other stuff since I've gotten to Japan. But what I packed when I left the United States, this is it kind of thing. This is the final thing. And what I brought with me was a, a paper holder. Uh, because Japan is pretty intense about their uh, disease restrictions at the moment. So I had to make sure I had my test stuff in order and everything like that kind of thing. And honestly, it's been great to just have on me for like ticket stubs and, and stuff kind of thing. I, I also brought a gluten-free card with me. I guess that's another thing I packed technically. Uh, I brought a gluten-free card with me because I'm gluten-free and I wanted to make sure that restaurants understand what I mean by gluten-free. So I found a gluten-free card online and uh, I, I printed it off and I got it laminated and I haven't used it a single time, but it's just a good thing to have just in case. Um, it just explains like, hey, soy sauce has gluten in it and everything like that kind of thing, all in Japanese, and it's supposed to be like proper Japanese and everything like that kind of thing. I brought one of those. Uh, that's everything though. Yeah, no, no. Uh, things I think I overpacked though. I'm just gonna quickly go over things I think I overpacked. Uh, clothing, I think I could slim down even more. Um, not really in all honesty. Really the only way I could slim down all my clothing is by going, is by going somewhere during the summer, not the winter. I think for the winter, I've I've got it pretty well set. Sure, I could only bring one pair of pair one pair of pants with me, but who knows? I might shit myself. Shit happens, kind of thing. I need to make sure I have an extra pair of pants. You know, Nick shit, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm bringing two pairs of pants with me just in case I spill something on them or something like that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but also just in case I shit them. Just saying. You never know what happens kind of thing. Um, other than that, no, I really don't feel like I overpacked anything. No, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, other than my toiletries, I really want just one razor to rule them all. 
but having two razors really is very much over packing right now in my opinion other than that though i feel like i did pretty good i feel like i did pretty good with packing and everything like that kind of thing 32 34 liter backpack whatever it is kind of thing i'm pretty happy with it and um i'm able to get everything to fit in it i also brought a snack bag from the united states but i ate it all so i don't have that on me right now i forgot to mention that until just now um so my backpack was more full than it is right now but yeah that's what i packed for japan as a cigarette smoker um i i know i've just kind of gone over just what i packed in general but i am a cigarette smoker so i went over what i packed there we go not clickbait not clickbait y'all you can't say anything can you, you can't say anything. yeah that's right that's right but you know, <laughs> I certainly hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video. Uh, that has been what I packed for Japan for, for my one month trip in Japan as a cigarette smoker. I went over everything in as concise of a fashion as I think I could have. Um, I'm sure I could have just made a list and just posted the list or something like that kind of thing or gone full travel channel and just been like, here's the list and here's my essentials, which I may or may not make a video of in the future, like my top five essentials for cigarette smokers in Japan. Uh, but though, but I certainly hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video. I certainly hope you all have enjoyed watching this video. If you guys have enjoyed watching this video where I talk about my, my one, where I talk about what I packed for one month in Japan as a cigarette smoker, even though I'm staying for five weeks, please, of course, make sure to like and subscribe for more content. I have my Instagram, my book, my merch, my PO box, and my second channel all in the description down below. Go check it all out. But yes, thank you very much for watching, y'all. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, y'all. Yes? No. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, y'all. To the next one, y'all. Stay safe and peace and have a great one. And let me know. Do you guys think I overpacked? Do you guys think I underpacked? Do you guys think there's anything else I need? Do you guys have any razor recommendations? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, and anything you guys think I could do without, let me know in the comments down below as well. Uh, excuse me though until the next one y'all stay safe and peace and have a great one yes sir yes sir you know what i'm saying i'm saying